Unfortunately, we made an assumption at the beginning as we were developing the 1D PML. We only considered the reflection coefficient for waves that are normally incident on the boundary. So propagating at a right angle towards the boundary, if this is the PML. But in the two-dimensional grid here, we can see that even for our waveguide application, we have waves that are propagating at other angles. These waves are not all going to be normally incident on the right boundary of our grid when they reach the end of the grid. This slide summarizes the reflection coefficients for different electromagnetic waves incident on a material interface. On the top, we have a wave that is normally incident. And we have a reflection coefficient expression that we used previously for the one-dimensional code. On the lower half, however, when waves are not normally incident on the material interface, we have to consider two different polarizations. Perpendicular polarization has the electric field perpendicular to the plane of incidence. So here's the electric field. It's pointing out of the screen, and the screen is the plane of incidence. Parallel polarization, right here, has the electric field of the propagating wave that is parallel here, parallel to the plane of incidence. These waves are incident at an angle theta. And we can see on the right side that depending on the polarization and the angle of incidence, the reflection coefficient will change. First, does the perpendicular or parallel polarization case correspond to our two-dimensional FDTD grid? 